Welcome back to part two of our fall 2021 mega video. Today I have three fall truck sign ideas from Dollar Tree. I'm Brandy and this is Making It My Own. Welcome back everybody. I have chosen three signs to start with and these came from Dollar Tree. You can choose whichever signs and colors and designs that you would like. The first one is a navy metal sign that has thanks on the tailgate and this one is kind of an aqua or teal color and it says fall something and then this hanging sign that is green which I really love. It's got that pretty watercolor look and I'm going to start dismantling that because we won't need all the bows and the hangers. We're going to start off with the aqua truck sign. We're going to make a really nice kind of a glow up or an upgrade to this sign. Now I'm just going to go ahead and take all the hangers off of the other things as well. You can save them. You don't have to cut them. You can untie them. Okay, so for this sign, I have this little stand that came with something that I got, I believe at the thrift store, but it was a, it's a sign holder. It actually held up some words or something. Oh, that sign says fall harvest. Okay, so if you have something like this, that would be great, but um, I'm going to show you what you can do if you don't have that. So I'm going to go back to the truck here and take this white marker that came from Dollar Tree and I'm just going to go around my edges and just kind of put a, a little more highlight on here with this marker. I'm going over the edges of it and I'm going to be going around the bumper and all of that. You can do this if you would like. If you don't want to, you don't have to. Also, you could use a brown for this. You could use um, a furniture stain marker that you can get from Dollar Tree, or you can use black, or you don't have to do this at all. But I wanted to make this look a little more high-end than what we have, so I figured a little more detail couldn't hurt it. You can also go over your pumpkins if you would like. I'm gonna take my sanding block and try to get the remainder of that off. For some reason, when it was manufactured, it did not have a complete coverage on there. It just didn't. And so I thought, well, if I want to keep those words, I can go back over it. And I'm just taking a metallic marker here and just going over the words. Now, I sanded this down to where I felt was pretty smooth. But even so, when I went back over it with the marker, you can see there's some grit. And it's making the print not look so great. So I didn't like it. I did let it dry. And then I just took this... This is a sanding block too, but this is actually like a nail file that you can get from, I believe, Dollar Tree. And I've just sanded that off with kind of a fine grit so that I didn't go all the way through my white. And then I'm going to erase it now. So I'm gonna use some of this linen white chalk paint. You could use acrylic paint, you know, whatever you wanna use in here, or you could even use gray and maybe color the whole thing out so that you don't even have a, a little tag sign back there. But I wanted to leave it because at this point, I wasn't exactly sure what I wanted to do here. But this gave me the ability to have some free space to write in, to put a sticker on, or whatever. So I've left this in the video so that you can see, you can fix your mistakes, and you have a few more options. Now, I'm going to take the same bag of, of little words that I have had that I have used already from Dollar Tree. This is a wonderful value. There's six in a pack and I hope you can find them. They are just raw wood. You can paint them, you can leave them as is, you can use a marker, whatever you wanna do. And some of these words actually fit right on that, that on that little sign there. Now this one is the one I'm gonna use. It's a little bit large for it, but it doesn't matter to me. So I'm gonna take this Cherry Furniture Repair marker and you can see what the color is on paper. It's actually darker when you put it on wood, so you might want to test your markers out first if you get them. They come in a three-pack. I absolutely love them. Look at the coverage with these things. They are wonderful, and I have used them for furniture repair, and they work great. So you can choose whatever colors you want. There are lighter ones. You can, like I said before, you can use paint or some type of marker if you wanted to use a different color. Orange would probably be pretty. 
but my home is rustic and I thought that this brown color is close to the color of the wheels and it definitely has that rustic vibe that I'm always trying to go for. Little hot glue will attach this down and I'm gonna try to center it right there. And just press it down. Hot glue will hold it there nicely. Okay, so I'm gonna give you an option. If you don't have one of those stands that I have, you can easily use Jenga blocks, the ones that come from Dollar Tree, and make your own stand. I'm just showing you here how to do it. There's a little dent in my table, so I stood these up on my um, ruler just so I'd have a flat surface when I glue it. And I'm just going to end to end put this on here the sign's not heavy there's really no need in using wood glue or anything like that if you want it more sturdy and more permanent you can certainly use wood glue but i'm not going to be using this i'm going to use my stand i just want to show you how you can do it you're going to make two rows like this of six blocks each and just try to get them nice and straight and then you'll be able to sandwich your sign in between with some hot glue and that should hold it. You don't have to leave them standing up. You could actually lay them down and make it a little, little more flat. It may give it a little more stability. Well, there you go. Okay, but for me, I'm going to use the stand because this is what I have. I'm gonna add some hot glue to the bottom of these tires and just try to get it seated down in the little slot here. It'll pretty much hold itself there until it dries. And then after it's dry, you can go on to embellishing. Now these little wooden stickers originally came from Target, but I got them at Dirt Cheap last year because I could get them at a very cheap price. And I've used the same couple of packages of these wood stickers for two years. You've seen them in my other videos. I love working with these, they're so cute and they're thicker than a regular sticker so they can stand on their own and I like that. Plus they're adhesive on the back, obviously if they're a sticker, but you can reinforce it with hot glue or anything that you want. You're going to see me moving these pumpkins around a little bit as I try to get them organized and try to arrange them how I like them. And because they will stick there like that, um, you can take them off and move them around a little bit if you don't press them down too hard, but you get the idea kind of what I was looking at to see if I liked it and I'm just gonna move them around a little bit put some more of these darker colored pumpkins and remove a few of the little glittery ones you can always paint them if you want them a different color okay so now I have these little burlap type leaves I have two different types I have an oak leaf that is brown and I have a maple leaf that is orange if I'm getting my trees right Feel free to correct me, in a nice way, of course. The great thing about this is the long wire that comes off the back. It will allow us a little extra, mm, a little extra base to hold it down, I guess, it's kind of what I'm getting at, because it'll go down in the slots underneath. But I like the way this looks. It looks like the truck is just speeding past the, the pumpkin patch and some leaves are kicking up by the tires, I like that. Okay, so you can bend these because they are on a wire, make them look a little more lifelike, give them some dimension, bend those wires together so that they stay in place. And then you can just press that bent wire right down into that little crack that is underneath the truck in the little stand. And it works out perfectly. And I'm gonna stand it up and I'm gonna add some hot glue just to lock it in place. Do that on both sides. You can trim it down if you want, but I feel like all of this stuff touching in there together and the glue on top of it really holds it in place. As I've said before, it's important when you're doing any type of, I guess, craft that you're going to have dimension it's going to be more 3d instead of a flat like a flat sign or something you kind of want to look at it from all angles whoops i lost the pumpkin look at it from all angles and make sure that you have everything the way you like it 
All right, now, got to have a bow on this. This is too cute not to bow it up. So here we go. I'm gonna use some of my thrifted, checked, or gingham, whatever you wanna call it, ribbon, and I'm gonna make an easy bow here. It's not actually named an easy bow, but it's pretty easy. You see what I did there. I made a loop, like a breast cancer awareness loop, pressed the loop straight down into the bottom part, and then, so then we have two loops and two tails. Easy, easy. It's such a simple bow, and I use it more and more because it's just so, it's pretty, it's a pretty bow, and it's a simple bow, and I think with rustic and farmhouse, you want kind of a simple look, you know? I've just used a little bit of, um, this was the tie off of one of the signs, I think, and just repurposed it to tie that up in the middle, trim off what we don't need. I used that because it was laying there. I do keep my scraps, so I keep them to the side in case I want to use them for anything else. I'm just fluffing that bow out a little bit. Everything is dry. Everything is set up nicely and it is in place. And then I'm going to add this little bow over here on the side of the truck. It's going to cover up the tag holes in the top. And I think it just gives it a cute little look. So fluff it out. I did this about a billion times when I craft. And I'm just gonna cut these tails in a slant. And then you can use a little bit of hot glue, just a little bit, cause you don't want it to shine, you know, to peek out through your ribbon. You almost want it to appear as though it is just sitting up there on its own. Now, this is a scrap off of something else I had. I'm gonna make, you see this really simple bow? Then I'm gonna double it so that I have four loops. All I did was double it back and now I have four loops and two tails. If you don't do the little, if you can't get that, that little double part, then you can surely do two bows and stack them on top of each other. We don't wanna make things more difficult than they have to be. But I thought this was cute, and it matches the kind of burlap that is in the leaves that we have there. I want to add a little more. So this is fabric, and feel free to alter anything that you get, any picks, any, anything that you get to make it your own. That's what the channel's about, right? Making it your own. So I'm making this leaf my own. And I'm just going to cut a little piece and tuck it here, because if I put the whole leaf there, it would be way too much way too big for that area. And I'm gonna do the same thing here. I'm gonna pull my wire off, put it aside, cause it can be used for another project. And I'm gonna trim down this orange leaf. And then just a little more hot glue and I'm gonna layer it on. I think I'm gonna put it behind there because I have the orange on the top. So I have a little variation in color there, I like that. And this is how it looks. And I like it. Do you like this little aqua sign? Be sure you follow me on my social media on Pinterest, Facebook, and Instagram. Now it's time for the navy truck wreath. Okay, this is a metal sign. I really like it. I'm gonna change it a bit though. What you're gonna need is some wired ribbon, whichever type that you like. I'm just showing you there, it's wired. I do change my mind on some of my my um, ribbon, so there will be some changes here. I have some twine, and I got this thrifted. You can use whatever you want. That happens to be braided. This came from the thrift store as well. And these beautiful pumpkin picks came from Dollar Tree. I have three of those. I have this little random pick. And then I have, I believe this one came from Dollar Tree also. You've seen this wreath frames. If you've been following me a while, I've used it on many, many projects. It is just a square Dollar Tree frame. It is a 14 by 14 wrapped with burlap and hot glued in place. And I've gotten a lot of good use out of this. Now, I'm going to take the thankful off of here. I am thankful 
but I'm going to take it off. I'm going to show you what you can do if you want to color something, if you want to make it a little different. Now I've taken a variety of blues here. I've got navy blue and two other type, types of blues. And I'm going to cover up Thankful. In case you want to change this out to something else, you can certainly do that. So let me show you what you can do. I have found that a flat brush, and this particular flat brush is my favorite one, works really, really well when you're getting some detail work in straight lines. It works great for me, putting the paint down, and I just love it. It's very soft. So this is two coats of that navy blue. And because it is not the same color as the rest of the truck, I'm taking a little bit of blue chalk paint and the, the other lighter color of blue, and I'm just going to kind of dry brush over the back of this truck. This is to kind of blend the color out a little bit. It's going to make the color definitely not the same as the rest of the truck, but similar enough that it blends in. And I'm just gonna go over that until I get it the color that I like. I'm just kind of pouncing and dragging that brush across all over the back. And there you have it. And that's what it will look like if you wanna, you know, if you don't wanna add anything to it. But I'm gonna add some words, so I'm going back and I'm laying them down to decide which ones I think I want. I'm telling you, these little wooden words, if you can find them, best value ever, I think, at Dollar Tree for their fall decor. Also, you can choose any of these clings. They're easy to put down with a little bit of Mod Podge or glue stick. Just giving you an idea here. So I have several of these and I will be doing a video with these. You can use ribbon to trim it out if you would like. You could take the other pieces of sign that came off of the green sign, trim it down, and use that. But for me, I'm going to take this worn penny metallic paint, and I'm going to use the Hello Autumn sign. I love copper. I've been loving copper in my decor this year, especially at fall. I think the warmth that copper brings is just, it's stunning. It looks so nice with all the rich fall colors. And I've went more toward this and kind of gotten away from some of the galvanized and gone a little bit more into the coppers. And I am very glad I did. I love it. I feel like it's more of me, my style. Okay, so I'm taking this braided rope here and we're going to frame this out. I want to frame it out because I want to give it a little more dimension. I'm going to take a little bit of hot glue, put it right down in the center of that braided rope and then just pull the ends out these uh, finger protectors came with my glue gun there love this glue gun i will link it for you below and then i'm gonna just add my glue here and just go up the trim around the edge of this tailgate little at a time i'm trying to keep my lines as straight as possible you do have to curve in the corners but you can kind of Press that down so that it makes a little bit of a straighter edge. But you know, tailgates aren't straight anyway, they round it anyway. Okay, so pressing it down and we're gonna go all the way around. You could just use jute or you could use yarn or you could use ribbon, whatever you like and that suits your style. I'm gonna use my little cutters here and just cut that down, leaving enough room to be able to close up that braid. I'm gonna close it. And I'm gonna pinch it, press all of that into those fibers, pressing it down, a little more glue, and then I can trim off what's left, and that will keep it from fraying. Okay, so now this is nice and dry. Only one coat of that copper paint did the trick. I'm gonna add some glue on here, and then I'm going to just tack it down to that braided rope. It gives me some space so I have more dimension and there's a little play of light underneath the Hello Autumn sign. I like that. like the shadows. And I know I want to put my truck in this corner. So now I need to figure out how I want to lay out my pumpkin picks. And I'm going to do one on the side standing, one on the bottom, kind of under the truck, and one across the top. And I'm not going to put anything on that right side. 
this is easy enough to do. You can just take your little wire here, cut these off, and you're going to make little pins to clip it down. Hey guys, if you saw that little sticker on the side, if you want to show me some love, I really love coffee, and you can buy me a coffee. It's that simple. It's a great way to support my channel, support my habit. You can look in the links in the description box and get me a coffee, and I'll be forever grateful. Okay, so we made like little hair pin clips. And we're just going to push these down, making sure that we get a little bit around the wire wreath that is underneath. It's going to keep everything stable if it is attached to the wire and not just that burlap. So now, I've just moved the truck out of the way and I'm going to put my picks down. You can cut these to make them the right length. Use your wire cutters. You do not want to ruin your scissors on this. Not, not your good scissors. And then you're going to just press through and attach it to the back. You're going to see me do that here a little bit. Can you guys believe that I am almost at 3,000 subscribers? I am so grateful and I know I say that a lot, but sincerely I am grateful. This is a dream come true for me to be able to work and do something that I really love from home. I can still do homework with my kids. I can still take care of my house. I can still cook. Not that I do that very often, but I still can do it. And I can still thrift. It's just wonderful. It has been wonderful, a great experience for me. And I really am, again, using the word grateful, forever grateful. I appreciate everybody who subscribes, everybody who views, all my thumbs up and thumb thumbs ups yes and all the likes that I get it's it's a wonderful experience and I can tell you now from the experience that I have had if you're watching this and you're thinking about doing a channel just do it it's this is very rewarding I've met some wonderful people through this okay so we're going to use another wire just like we used to hold down those pumpkin picks and thread it through that hole that's already there in the truck for us Thread it through the hole and through the frame and it will hold it there. But now to keep it from kind of falling through here, we're gonna use a piece around the tire and you can barely notice this. Same thing, you're just gonna make a loop around it right at the top of that tire. You can see here what I'm doing. Press it flat, pull it tightly and it's gonna stay in place. I'm gonna take my cutters and take this little, I think this is like a cattails, take these apart and start laying those down. Now the good thing about this is you can either put those through the wires that we use to hold down the pumpkin picks or you can thread them right through your burlap. If you wrap your burlap and secure it tightly enough to your frame, your picks should stay in there nicely for you. So you can see in some of these spots I'm going through the wire loops and into the burlap so that you don't even see the ends of the picks. It makes um, wreath making very easy using those burlap, using the burlap to wrap your frames. Now, if you wanna give your leaves some more dimension because the ones that come from Dollar Tree and some of the ones that you get from the craft stores, they're flat. You can just put a little bit of glue. I know you can't see what I'm doing right there, but you'll see in a minute. Little bit of glue right in that bottom piece and then pinch it together. That's going to give it a little fold and it's going to give it a little dimension. So it actually looks like a leaf that blew off the tree with a little crinkle in it. I'm going to take some oak leaves. I'm going to take some maple leaves of whichever colors that you prefer. I'm using these colors because I like these colors. And just start adding those in the spaces where you feel like you need coverage. I look for spaces where I can see the wires still. I look for places that look a little bit bare and that's where I wanna add my leaves. So that's what I'm doing. I did overlap some onto the truck. Easy to do. You can see there how I did that. A little bit of glue, pinching it, letting it dry, 
and then just laying it down there. That gives it a little fold and it lifts it away from the surface a little bit. It's giving you some dimension so it's not flat. Cut off any bare wires that might be sticking out. I noticed that I had one and I went ahead and trimmed that down. And then I'm just going to try to, as I lay my leaves down, try to give some variety in color so that I don't have the same colors right next to each other. Gives your eyes a little something to dance off of. It gives your, you know, your, your eye keeps moving. It adds interest, so that's what we like. Okay, so here is my bow maker tool. I made this. It is a very popular video on my channel. If you want to see how to make your own, I will link that for you. I am taking some gorgeous burlap and lace ribbon and I'm going to make, I think this is a very simple bow to make. I could probably have made it in my hand, but I want to show you how to do it. If you have a bow maker or if you're interested in making one and well, you're interested in how to make one. So this is what I'm doing and you can see very easy. These loops are about five, six inches. The bow, this particular ribbon has lace on one side and no lace on the other side. So you need to twist it so that your pattern stays on top. Easy enough to do. This is a very good quality ribbon. I got it at the thrift store. It was a brand new spool. I could not believe it, but the quality is fantastic. It's a very stiff ribbon with wire. I think it's probably mm, close to three inches wide. And then here is some Dollar Tree ribbon. It's a beautiful plaid. I was so happy to find it again this year. I used it last year in some projects and found it again because I ran out. Now this has the same pattern on both sides and it has a pretty coppery gold trim on it. And that is on both sides as well. So you don't have to twist it unless you just want to. I'm gonna add that on top of it. Same process. I fold my ends under and tuck them down. It helps give a little poof to your bow. This bow is the same size. And you can just see me pulling the tails outward. I learned to pull the tails outward from Trish and Kay over at Crafting Cousins. Otherwise, I would have had them just sticking out to the side, but I, I like the idea of doing it this way. It makes it easier for, for when you get ready to fluff your bow. Now this is not wired. This is an extra piece of ribbon that I got this year in the fall um, fall section, I guess, from Crafter Square. But I thought it was very pretty and I like the difference in the size. So I went ahead and put that on top. It's not going to stand up by itself because it is not wired. Just know that if you decide to use non-wired, it's a little, little more difficult to work with. I've just pulled that off and I'm using some florist wire to just squeeze it and twist it down and that blank space in the corner is where this bow will go all right so i'm going to take the rest of that wire that was on the bow thread it through the back twist it up and press it into the frame now at this point you can look at it and decide okay is how are the tails are they too long you know, is it obscuring my truck? Is it overwhelming the frame? You know, just look at it again from all angles and decide what you need to do. It's better to leave it a little bit long and then trim it off because if you cut it too short, eh, you're not gonna be able to fix that. Okay, so I've decided since this ribbon that I chose has a lot more, well, richer, darker colors, those kind of jewel tones, that I wanted to go back and add some more leaves that were more in that color family, I guess. So these are wine colored and some reds, and I went ahead and added those so that it would be, you know, that it would be a little more matchy, a little more cohesive. And you can see I fluffed the bow out over there already. I try to spare y'all some of that. I'm gonna add a leaf right in the top of that bow. And then I pulled the pumpkin off under there because it was just kind of hanging and I've decided that I want to glue it down on the bottom. I've glued it. I used a little, I think I used a paintbrush to poke a hole in the top 
and then just a little piece of stem off of something else to make a stem on my pumpkin. And this is how this one looks. Pretty pretty. I like it. What do you think? Yes. Okay, so now the third sign is the green truck hanging sign. I'm just showing you I've got some picks here that I might want to use. Definitely need some florals. I have a scrap of thrifted fabric. I have some of the, these are larger size. They're bigger than Jenga's. So I'm measuring those for you so you can see what size they are. If you have this size, great. If you don't, go ahead and use what you have. And I'm going to use this gorgeous thrifted ribbon. I pulled it right off of something else and brought it home with me. And then this gingham. Here is the little truck. And then here is a Valentine sign that I have used twice and we're gonna use it again. I'm gonna lay it down on top of my fabric, trim it off where I have at least an inch, maybe a little over an inch on the edges so that I can hot glue it. So I'm gonna put glue down and I'm going to tuck it over. And this is how this is gonna look. All the way around, glued down nicely, trim off what you don't need. And it kinda looks like an ironing board, doesn't it? Okay, who still irons their clothes, by the way? Is anybody? Okay, so now you can see what these blocks are for. I'm gonna make a little shelf almost in the back here. This is gonna hold this away from the sign and it's also gonna hold our floral foam so that we can do a little arrangement. I'm gonna use just plain hot glue here. You can use something more permanent if you'd like, but because I recycle my projects and use them again and again on many different things, I don't want a totally permanent hold. If I do want a permanent hold, it's gonna be something that I don't intend to take apart. It's gonna be in my house a long time. So I found this cute little vinyl cutout. It's a peel and stick that came from Target, but I got it at Dirt Cheap. And there's two in a pack, and I thought, hey, let's try this. This is a Merry Christmas sign I got for 10 cents from Dollar General last year, and I used white chalk paint on the back of it. I just used one good coat. Now I'm peeling this off and doing it with my fingers. In case you are not someone who owns a Cricut, then you wouldn't have transfer paper. So I'm just trying to show you here, it can be done without transfer paper, but you have to take your time and you gotta be sure of where you put it when you put it down because the font is so thin that you would definitely tear something trying to lift it, I do believe. But there you go. And I'm, I'm okay with where it's laying because I can't change it now. Then I'm just going to take my leaves and just add those on there. Kind of wherever. And this is what we have for that. Now I'm going to rough it up a little bit by taking that same fingernail file sanding block and just go all around my edges. I know that I want to put it on the top and in order to get my placement and to make sure that it is straight, I'm going to use this little ruler at the top just to give me a little space here so I know where I want to put it. I've added hot glue on the back of the sign and I'm just going to press it down so that it doesn't come apart. You can put something on top of this to hold it in place until it is firmly set if you would like. Or you could use some clamps over the spots with the glue so that it stays in place until it is dry. Okay, so now I'm just using my foam, my block against the foam to determine how thick I want my pieces of foam to be. I'm just using a metal ruler to just slice this right down. And you dust it off and get all that stuff off of there because it's going to make a mess. I don't even have to use hot glue to put this in place. I've trimmed another piece for the other side and it fits in there and sits perfectly by itself. Now the truck is gonna sit like this and I'm gonna use this again as a spacer to make sure that I get my truck exactly where I want it. This isn't glued down, it's just a spacer for making this straight. I'm gonna use hot glue again all around the edges 
to place this down. I'm standing above it, trying to make sure that I have it somewhat centered. And I'm gonna place it down. You can slide it a little bit. Now I'm gonna weight this down because I don't want anything to come away. Now for the bow on top, I'm using this beautiful pumpkin ribbon. It is wired. And I'm going to just pinch it up just like that, same as we did on the other one. But this one is going to be stacked. I'm gonna add several layers on this one. I'm gonna pinch this one up in the middle. Put that on top. And then I was on the search for what I wanted to go in the middle. I wanted something a little more burlappy, something a little more neutral. So I took some of this burlap, I guess we're gonna call it ribbon. I don't know if you would call this ribbon or not, but it is definitely not wired. You can pull the edges away if you would like to, and that will help it to fray and make it a little more rustic. If you fold it against the curve, that will also help it lay a little more flat. And I've decided that it should go right in the middle. I like the way that looks. It gives a little buffer between the prints. Now I'm gonna take another little piece of scrap jute and just tie a couple of knots in the center there tightly so that it doesn't come apart. I'm just using my thumb to hold that knot in place because it will slip, it will slip. I'm gonna dovetail my ends here And like I said, pull, pull your little excess away if you would like a little bit of fraying. It's really a cute rustic look. And then I'm just going to fluff. I'm going to adjust a little bit to make sure that I get my loops the size I want. And then I'm going to dovetail what else needs to be dovetailed. Fluffing that bow as usual. You know how we do here on my channel. We fluff it to death. And then trim off this because you're not gonna need this on, on here. We're gonna glue it. Now I know I want it at the top. I'm gonna put a good bit of glue up there on my top. Above that sign, I'm going to center it above there and then use a clamp to hold it in place. This clamp actually came with my lighting kit, so, but you can use any kind of clamp you have. So now I've switched up my florals and I'm going to use these picks. Use whatever you like. But I like these, they kind of look, they don't look like wheat, but they give that airy feel, and I like that. I think it's a very farmhouse addition to this rustic project. As well as that striped fabric in the background. I'm gonna add some of these little orange flowers here and there. If your picks are too small, then you can just add a pick off of something else. And these beautiful little puff balls. I don't know what these are, but they they came from Dollar Tree and I love them. I'm gonna put them as little twinsies and I'm gonna put them in sets of two in here. I think they look really cute in here. What do you think? Do you like these? Have you crafted with these yet? I've seen a lot of people haul them, but I have not really seen people using them. So I'm just curious. All right, I'm trimming up a little bit on my bows. Again, trim where you need. Move things around. If you need a little bit of glue to hold things in place, you can go ahead and do that. And this is our third sign. What do you think about this? Cute, huh? All right, so we're gonna need a device to hang it. And I'm going to use a little hanger off of another project. I removed this off of something else. I'm gonna add some hot glue here, right around that hole and just put it right there. It's not a perfect fit, but it won't matter. That glue is gonna take up the space. So here we go. Here are our finished truck sign DIYs. What do you think? I hope that you try some of these. Which is your favorite? Do you like the aqua, the green, or the navy? I would love it if you would subscribe. Thank you for coming back if you are already subscribed. And give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed these projects. If you have any requests for projects, let me know below. Thanks for stopping by and I'll see you again soon. Bye. Today I have a fall tote bag DIY. Beginner easy, keep watching. I'm Brandy and this is Making It My Own. Today I'm gonna try out this little mini press. I was approached by the company 
to see if I would like to try it, and I don't have a press to go with my new Cricut, so I decided to give it a try. It's got a little base and everything. All right, so I just picked out a very easy little font. It says Happy Fall, y'all. I'm just weeding it out here. Taking all those little extras out, I've already taken the excess off of it. That was a mess, let me tell you. Beginner's mistakes, you know? But I think I'll learn from all my little mistakes along the way, the way we all do. And I'll get better. This process will be better. So if you're interested in using this after you've seen the video, you can look down in the description box and I'll have the links to this and we've also got a coupon code for you. So be sure you check that out if you're in the market for a little press. Now granted, I have a big item here that I'm using a little press on and it still works. It takes a little bit longer, but it still works. But I think this would be ideal for smaller projects. It's just real easy three different levels of heat. You just press the little on button. You wait, it'll flash red until it's ready and then it will turn green and you can use it. Okay, so I've used heat transfer vinyl here. I'm gonna use a canvas tote bag and I'm just gonna put this box top, it's a wooden box top. It came from like a wine box, I believe. It works perfect for this because it fits right down in there. And this way I've got a harder surface to iron on top of. So I'm gonna center this as much as I can, press it down, and then I'm gonna get my ruler and make sure that it's fairly even. And it looks about right. Then I'm going to cover it up, protect that, that surface there, and start pressing it down. And I'm just gonna press it down section by section a little bit at a time, holding it on there, making sure it has plenty of time to set up and adhere those vinyl pieces to the canvas bag. The canvas bags came from Goodwill. I found a pile of them and I only took four and now I wish I would have taken more. I will definitely get more of those things because they make the ideal blank for any season. So I had it on high power just one click and I put it back on the base when I was finished and now I'm checking to make sure it is stuck down and it is I was scared when I lifted this up I was worried it wasn't gonna stick but it did and it turned out so nice this little press is not heavy it's it's a very lightweight piece, which makes it great for my hands. I sometimes have issues with my wrists, so this is perfect for me. I like it, and I plan on using it in conjunction with my Cricut for lots and lots of projects this year, and of course next year. So I'm going to give you an idea of what you can do once you've made your creation. I'm just going to stuff the bottom of the bag. It's got paper in the bottom. Then I put a little piece of that excess canvas in there to stuff it. If you want to use it for a decoration, you want it to freestand, so that will put uh, a little stiffness to the bag. Then I've added a beautiful fall scarf in the side. I'm going to take a couple of picks that happen to coordinate with the colors that are in the scarf, and I'm just going to kind of lay those to the side, almost like we've been to the farmer's market and we've picked up some things and we're ready to go. I'm just going to add that in. Then I'll put this little plush scarecrow. I got him at Goodwill too. And then make whatever kind of bow you like. This is a very simple bow. I just tied it in the middle with some jute. I've got a pin and I'm going to secure it to the handles of the bag with a pin. It makes a really pretty display, but if you didn't want to use it as a display, you could take the stuffing out of the bottom, maybe put any type like magazines or seasonal candy in the bottom and give this as a gift. This is really nice and if you have somebody who loves fall, this would be perfect. I know I would love getting this. I really wasn't sure in the beginning how I would benefit from having transfer vinyl and, and doing things with fabrics, but I can clearly see now after using it, and I have so many ideas of things that can be done, 
and now having everything I need to put those together makes it perfect. I've got the press. It's inexpensive. You know, it's easy to store because it's compact and small. It's not heavy. You don't have to put an excessive amount of weight onto it to hold it in place, which is great if you have arthritis or wrist issues, anything like that. Uh, it makes it very easy. It's got the little base that protects your surface. It's stable. It doesn't fall over when you place it back down, so that is not an issue. And after it's on for a certain amount of time, it will start beeping to let you know, and it'll go off by itself. So that's great. And you just plug it in to a regular two-prong plug. No problems at all. I'm very happy to have this in my crafting toolkit. Do y'all like this? I mean, I'm from the South, so happy fall, y'all, is just perfect for me. But you can use anything you like with any type of vinyl any colors that you like i happen to have gotten my vinyl at hobby lobby when it was 50 percent off so it's normally 14.99 i think so i got it for like seven dollars and it's a big you know pretty big roll you can do a lot if you trim your vinyl down um, to make sure that you don't waste a lot the next videos coming up will be halloween and they're not scary halloween nothing gross so stay tuned for that and then i'll do some more thanksgiving type crafts before we start Christmas. So be sure you keep watching. See you again soon. Bye. Today I have 10 new fall tiered tray ideas for you. Keep watching. I'm Brandy and this is Making It My Own. All right, we're gonna start off with window cleans and some little signs. These are chalkboard signs that I got at Dirt Cheap, but you can get some at the Dollar Tree, something similar. Since this is for inspiration, you might not find the same things, but we can get similar things. And a lot of these signs you can just press with your fingers and pop the back out. If you can, you can do it that way. If not, then you can paint it white. Then you're going to take some scrapbook paper or any type of decorative paper that you like. Something with a fall theme would be great if you're doing a fall tray. I'm just going to put that back down on there and flip it over. Wouldn't matter one way or the other, actually. And then you're going to trace out around it. Take your scissors and cut it out or use any type of a cutter that you have to get that the right size to cover up that background. I like this print because it looks like fall to me. Fall or Christmas even. It's kind of black, white, gray. Really pretty neutral colors. I'm going to use my glue stick to go all over this. You can use any type of glue stick you have. You can use Mod Podge if you would prefer. And we're just going to press that on. Smooth it down so it gets a good grip on your surface. I don't need these little hangers so I'm just going to cut these off. We're going to be using it on a tear tray so it doesn't need a hanger. Now this should snug right back in there. You don't necessarily have to use glue on these. They pretty much stay where they're put, but I will use some glue to put it down. So I've just chosen a couple of little of these clings that I liked that would be cute on a tear tray or maybe a coffee bar. I love the little sweater weather and it looks really cute with that background. And it almost makes the sweater look like it has a little plaid design on it. So that was our first one and we're going to move on to the second one. These are so easy, something so simple for you if you're, especially if you're a first time tier tray decorator, you can definitely try something like this and it, it's a lot of fun to do it. Fun and easy. It's just repetitive right now. I'm going to take my little coffee cup pumpkin spice sign and put that down and I decided I wanted to add a little something else to that so I'm going to put a pumpkin there. Now all of these came off of the same sheet of clings from Dollar Tree. You can use any of them though. Alright so I'm just going to take my glue gun here and put a bead of glue all the way around just a light bead of glue all the way around the inside so that it doesn't pop out of the frame. It will actually stay in there if you get your paper trimmed up correctly, but 
I think I'm going to keep these around a while, so I'm just going to glue them down. I'm going to use my little handy dandy paperweight and put it down just to hold these in place until they dry. Moving on to the next, I'm going to use a little more of that same paper. One of these little pins. This is just a metallic pin that I got from Goodwill. It's from Office Depot, I think. I tried the color and I like it. So I'm just going to cover this Give Thanks to put on the other sign. Now you can clearly tell when you look at this, this is too big to fit in the inside of the frame. It's too large for that, but we want it to overlap. It's going to give it some dimension and it's going to give it kind of an interesting look. So when it's all colored and the pen dried very quickly, I was able to work with it immediately. I'm going to glue that back in and you'll see how we put the give thanks on. So I'm just going to see where I want to put it and I like it sitting on the outside. So just a little hot glue there and put my give thanks right on top. There you go. There's our third sign. All four of these signs are going to coordinate and I'm going to show you shortly how that works. Okay, so these are just some little chipboard pieces of pumpkin scatter, I guess you would call it. And they came from Target originally, but I got them from uh, Dirt Cheap, I believe, last year. So I'm just getting an idea of which ones I want to put in there. And I'm going to make this kind of a 3D thing like this. The little squatty pumpkin is going to go in the background. And I pushed it up to the top so you can see more of it behind the other pumpkins when we layer those on. I'm going to add some glue right on the corners, making sure that my pumpkin doesn't hang over the bottom because we want this to stand. And that the gourd here is in the same type of um, situation. We don't want anything to prevent it from standing up straight because it's going to be standing. So here are our little signs and we're going to put a little stand on the sign so that it will hold itself up and put it on the tear tray. I'm going to add some hot glue, press down a little wood jingle block from Dollar Tree, just like that, and it will be able to stand. Now you can start embellishing. You can do anything you want to make this your own. I'm just going to use a little tiny bow from Jupe right on the top of my little pumpkin in the background so that you don't forget he's back there. Okay, so here you go. Just showing you what these all look like, how they look together. Hey, if you want to show me some love, you can buy me a coffee. Look in the description box for the link. Thanks. You can see how these look together. And these. Everything coordinates nicely. So you could use maybe a few of these on your tear tray and a few of these on your coffee stand. They look really nice together, I think. All the colors. Cute. What do you think? These were so easy to make. Okay, so using the same clings, I'm going to use these wood rounds. This is just another idea of something you can do if maybe you prefer a more rustic look. You can take one of your clings and put it on a wood slice. These are actually ornaments that I got from Goodwill, but you can certainly get these at the craft stores, especially around Christmas time. So you just choose which one is going to be the best fit for your clean. You don't want anything hanging over because it could peel off. And you're just going to put your glue on there and then place it down. Now I've specifically put it where it covers up the stem. It really wouldn't matter one way or the other. I'm going to use another one of these wood pieces. This one's a little chunky piece that came in a bag from Dollar Tree. I'm making sure that it will lay flat. And then I'm going to take the flat part of that wood round, press those together so that it will stand on its own. Otherwise, it'll just roll around. You could definitely use a Jenga block on the back of these two, but you'll be able to see it. And I was trying to cover that up. So again, choosing the round that you like the best and placing your designs on. I think this is a very rustic look. And then just using a different piece of wood from the longer 
um, wood bags that you can get at Dollar Tree. I'm just gonna get, I'm just giving you options here, so you know you're gonna see a lot of different stuff. I'm going to cut one of these clings. You can do it very easily, and then glue it down, kind of at an angle. And I'm going to use another little stick in the back to hold it up. And this is what these three look like. All right, then here we go with some pumpkin ornaments. You get these also at the Dollar Tree. You can use those stains from Dollar Tree furniture repair markers. I'm gonna use some paper and a different uh, window cling set. So I've chosen maple as my color and I'm going to color this pumpkin about a quarter of the way down. So I'm just making my line and filling it in there. Use whatever color you like. And then I'm gonna use my plaid paper on the bottom half. Blue stick, gonna get it down really nicely on all the edges and corners. And then I'm going to place my paper down. Press it down and then trim it out. Then you can take your sanding block and just go around the edges. Okay, once that's done, choose which one of these you want to use. And we'll be putting that down again with the glue stick. These are such easy projects. I know you're going to be trying at least one of these, right? Of course, but the best is yet to come, so don't click away yet. Okay, so we're just gonna press that down. And yes, you can see it's a little bit um, kind of smoky looking. It's not completely crystal clear that you can see all the way through it, but I don't mind that, that's okay. Then I'm gonna take my Mod Podge, and this is my matte Mod Podge. I'm going to go over the whole thing so this will stay down. All of these layers will stick together. The wood, the paper, and the window cling. And I'll let it dry. And then I'm going to take a little bit of checked or gingham ribbon. And I'm going to make just a little simple bow to go on the top of it. This is a good way to cover up the little hole in the top. Just pull it until you get it the right length and then trim up those tails. This is super cute. There you go. Follow me on my social media, Pinterest, Facebook, and Instagram. I'll be happy to see you there. Okay, now for my favorite two, we're gonna use these monogram pumpkins from Dollar Tree. I have a P and an A, and I'm gonna show you how you can take these apart. They're in two different layers here. You're going to take a thin wooden roller or maybe a, a thin butter knife or something and just pry it gently underneath. It's just held down by glue, no nails, then pull off the bow. Same thing here. We're going to go underneath, press, try not to pull or break that top layer, and then we're going to pull it off. Pull that bow away. Now we have two pieces for each one of these pumpkins that we can work with, and we're going to do them in opposites. I'm gonna take some of this scrap paper that we just used so that our items will coordinate. I'm gonna trim it, cut it out, and now I'm going to put the glue on it, press it down, simple, simple. I'm using the smooth side of that A. Either way, it will fit. And then the glue strip that's on the back is almost like rubber cement. It comes off so easy. I just pried the corner and then pulled it off. Now, some options, you can use scrapbook paper, you can use that cork board, whatever you like to use. But for me, on this orange pumpkin, I am going to use this beautiful plaid paper that I've had for a few years. You can see that it came from Target originally, but I got mine at Dirt Cheap. I have traced it out and trimmed it down. And now I'm going to lay this beautiful, beautiful blue and orange plaid paper down on top of this pumpkin. And using my wood ruler, I'm just going to smooth it all out. It is a little bit of texture on there, so you know I'm just making sure that I press it down nicely. Now you can see there is an overhang from the paper, which is not a problem. We're gonna go around with a sanding block and just clean up those edges. You can see how that paper just frays away and falls off. Gives it a nice look. All right, now I wanna add some leaves to this pumpkin 
I'm going to trim down some of my large burlap leaves. Bet you know where these came from. Dollar Tree! Yep, you guessed right, of course. Okay, hopefully they'll still have these. I got mine last year, so I had some left. Then I'm going to also use the oak leaf. So I have part of the maple leaf that I've cut, part of the oak leaf that I've cut. And I'm just trying to find the position that I like on the pumpkin for my little leaves. You know, I generally put everything to the left, but for some reason, I wanted this on the right. So here I am trying it on the right. And this is why I haven't glued the center section down yet. I want to put the leaves on first. Since I know I want them to overlay like that, I'm just going to hold them and glue them that way using my little ruler here. Yes, I used it as a paint stirrer, so it looks terrible right now. Still serves its purpose, though. I love it. All right. Again, holding that in place because I know that's the right placement for it. I'm going to add some hot glue and press it down. Protect your fingers. There is a chance that the glue can come through the burlap. I'm going to take my hot glue, put it all over this layer of the pumpkin and put it back in place. But wait, we're not done. We have a little something extra. Let's add a pretty bow. This is some ribbon that my friend and neighbor gave to me from her stash when she was cleaning out her supplies. And it's a very pretty little ribbon with little, I don't even know what you call that, trim on it. It's cute though. I'm going to do another one of those super simple bows. This video is all about simplicity. So I'm going to, yep, that's the right size, just like that. I'm going to take two little pieces of jute the same size, and I'm going to, at the same time, make the exact same type of bow. Pull it out, make it look nice, trim it down, then I'm going to trim that bow, that ribbon bow, down to the same size and just decide how I want to layer these on the pumpkin. Hey, if you haven't subscribed already, I would love to have you as part of my YouTube family. We are over 3,000, so that's a milestone, and I'm so happy to be there. Thank you for all of your support and love. Here's my pumpkin. What do you think about it? Cute. Okay, so going on to the next pumpkin. This is how it's going to look, and we want to embellish the plaid section. I'm going to put my middle back on the pumpkin. You could paint the background if you wanted, but I like it just the way it is. I like the white there. And I've chosen this pumpkin out of a set of uh, vinyl cutouts that were originally from Target, and I got them at Dirt Cheap. I'm going to put this down. I'm not using, I'm not going to use any um, transfer paper because I want you to see this can be done. You just have to be patient and careful in your placement. Okay, so now we have our little pumpkin down there and it looks super cute. I've got some coppery looking wired ribbon here and it's like a sheer ribbon. And I also some of the same gingham ribbon that I used on another project in this video. And I'm just gonna trim it up too. And I'm gonna make a pretty bow for it. So this bow is a little bit different. I'm just gonna cross it over and then walk the middle down to the bottom just like that I'm going to pinch it up and then you can use some type of a clip to hold it in place while you work on the next layer of your bow and this is going to be this one same little simple bow and then we're just going to add that right on the top i'm going to use another piece of that ribbon to tie those together and that's going to give us some extra check tails Tie that tightly in the middle, hold it in place, put another knot in there so it's not going anywhere. Then you can fluff it and you can trim it where you want to trim it. You shouldn't need any extra hot glue to hold anything together. It should stay there nicely for you. And I know that I want to put it right up there where the original bow was. I'm going to put it there and use this clamp to hold it down until it is dry and set up. And this is how this pumpkin looks. What do you think about that one? Cute, huh? Okay, so back to the little pumpkin that we made before. 
We use the stand just like on the other ones. All right, so I've got a bunch of my projects all together in this to show you how everything coordinates nicely and how much potential your own crafts can can do. And look, look at what we've used. Dollar Tree and Thrifted Items. Look at this. I want to know which of these projects was your favorite. Was it the little the picture type signs that we made? Was it the wood slices or did you like the pumpkins in the end the best? Or maybe it was the little ornament pumpkin. I would love to know what you think. Thank you so much for stopping by. I appreciate every one of you and I will see you again soon. Bye! Today I have three watercolor fall DIYs from Dollar Tree Napkins. I'm Brandy and this is making it my own. All right, using Dollar Tree items, we're gonna start off with one of these little wooden boxes. Doesn't matter which one you get. I have some of these napkins, and these are the longer ones. I have some spackling and a little spatula. We're going to start off by filling in the holes in this little llama. I chose the llama because it seemed to have smaller holes, less work to have to do. So I'm just going to take the spackling with my fingers. Don't be afraid to get your hands dirty. This washes off easily. And I'm going to press it down in each one of those holes. You have to kind of press it and then push it to the side. Otherwise, it'll just go straight through. So you have to kind of do it at an angle to make it stay in there. We want to fill these in because we're gonna be putting something on top. Now I've taken the flat side of my spatula, you can use a scraper or anything that you have, and just pushing it down and then going across the top. So you see what's left on the back, you just can scrape those little crumbs out and put them back into your container. Now once you get those all filled in, you'll be ready to let it dry. There you go. Be sure you put your lid back on that so it doesn't dry out. Then you'll want to put it in a place where it can dry. And while that is drying, we're going to start working on the bottom part of the box. You can use paint, you can use stain, you can leave it the same color it is, you can use furniture markers, whatever you want to use here. I'm just going to take some of my antiquing wax, I love this stuff, I'm going to add some water, that's all that is in that bottle. Mix it up to make a stain. It has virtually no smell and it's very easy to clean up. I use wipes. You can use whatever kind of, you know, wipes that are okay for your skin. They seem to work really good. Baby wipes, whatever you got. I'm gonna dip it in there, kinda, of, you don't wanna to put too much in. You don't want it dripping necessarily, but enough to give you the coverage that you want. You can always add more to it or put another coat on there if you want to. So you're just gonna go around all of the sides and see, you definitely want to protect your surface because it does make kind of a mess. This is a wax, so be sure you mix it well with your water. Okay, and then be sure you go around that rim on the top. You want this to have a nice finished look. We want everything to be nice and clean. Go along on the inside of the box. I wanted to show you this instead of completely taking it away because you can get into those corners just by rolling it and pushing it down with your finger. That way you get right down into the corner, just like I did there. And you'll have no white spots left. And you're just gonna go from side to side. I like the wipes rather than using a brush. Um, it just works better. It gives me the coverage that I like and it's still sheer enough that you can see the wood grain. And I think that that's important. We're gonna make something really cute with this box. All right, so we're gonna put that aside and let it dry. Once your spackling is dry, you're gonna go around just the edges. You're not gonna go onto the top. We're gonna to do something different there. So just carefully go around the edges of this box so that it matches the bottom. Or if you're painting, instead of doing this technique, you know, you can go ahead and put your paint there too. And then we're gonna do also the inside it's really important that that spackling is dry when you do this because if it's not and you press down, it's going to push the spackling out the front. Then you're going to have a mess. So I'm going to go on top 
and put down some linen white chalk paint. You can use whatever type of paint you have. You can use acrylic. It really does not matter here. The reason I'm using white is because I want my watercolor napkin to really stand out. So there we go. I'm going around the edges carefully so that it doesn't get on the sides where we stained it. And I'm just making sure that there's no holes and you don't necessarily see that little llama through there. So there we go. Once it is dry, you can see the outline a little bit there, but that won't matter. I'm going to flip it over and just trim out around the box top. You don't have to do this exactly. This is, it's so much easier to do it this way. Don't bother yourself with trying to cut something so thin perfectly. So I'm going to use some Mod Podge here and I'm just using the mat. I'm going to squeeze a little bit out there. You don't want to get too much because you don't want it to be, you don't want it to make that tissue paper of that napkin to tear. So just enough that it's going to give it a, you know, some stickiness. And then you're going to take just a single layer, so be sure you separate your layers and lay that on the top. I'm just lightly laying it and trying to get it centered before I press it down. You do have a little bit of room to, to move here if you need to. And then from the inside out, I'm just going to press with my fingers. Don't be too concerned if you get little wrinkles here and there. It's okay. This is watercolor and it virtually disappears. So you can see here, I'm just trying to, to press out and away from the center and press down around my edges. Just like that. Simple. I'm not concerned that it's hanging over and that there's some pieces that, you know, are going over the top of the box. That's not a problem. I'm going to add a little bit more. I'm not going crazy with this Mod Podge, but I want enough to seal it in so that this will last. You can use glossy, you can use whatever, you know, Mod Podge you want to use. If you like a glossy look, you can do that. But I think with the stain, it's going to look better if I use matte. So that's why I chose it. Okay, and now carefully with your fingers, you can just push away. I'm pushing, not pulling. I'm pushing it down and then letting it kind of slide off of there. It's not wet. You know, it's only wet where the uh, top of the box is. So this dry part will pretty easily come off there. I'm just gently rolling off some of the pieces there. And then once it dries, you can take a sanding block and just very gently brush away the little edges. And you can see how pretty that is with the, the colored sides there with the stain sides. I think it looks really nice. It's a very rustic look. And of course, you know, I'm always striving for rustic, but you do whatever you want. These videos are for inspiration. So you do what you like. Now, what a cute little gift idea, guys. I wanted to show you this. So here it is complete, all dried and ready to go. I've taken some raffia and stuck it in the bottom or whatever this is, excelsior grass, whatever this is. You can use paper shreds. Then I've taken some seasonal candies here these are just some chocolates and I'm gonna put these down in the box they're matching colors put the lid on it what a cute little gift idea so we're gonna go back in the inside of this lid now since we know what we want to do with it and I'm using a window cling you can use a sticker you can paint this do this however you want to do it you can use a piece of fabric even maybe make a special note and attach that whatever you want to do here I'm just going to clip this off and make this work. I'm going to use some spray adhesive just to try something different. Protect your surface here. Make sure the area is ventilated. And then put down my little leaf. And by the way, the leaf has stayed here. It, you don't have as much time to work with it with the spray adhesive as you do with a glue stick or Mod Podge. So be sure you get it where you want it because it is not coming up. So I'm just gonna rub that down and make sure it stays. And I'm gonna put our lid back on, take a little piece of jute. I'm just kind of making sure I have the even amounts on the sides for my bow. You can use ribbon here. You can use um, anything you want, anything you want here. Some string, you can use some baker's twine, 
um, whatever, whatever looks good to you. But this is rustic to me and I like it. Farmhousey rustic, very cute. I'm just making my bow look pretty. And there we go. Isn't that cute? Who wouldn't love getting that as a little pick-me-up? Give me a thumbs up if you think you would enjoy something like this. Okay, so on to the next one. We're gonna take some little wood cutouts from Dollar Tree, another one of the same napkins, and then you can get, I got mine thrifted, this little wood piece, but it's, I think it's a seven by five, I think is what I measured. But you can use any little wood piece that you can get at a Crafter Square. Different shapes, but the same purpose probably. Gonna use a paint repair marker also, and then I'm just trying to decide again which of the little cutouts I'm gonna use. I'm making sure that the surface is smooth enough. Sometimes when you get them, they're not sanded, so be sure that you sand it down or it's, it, it could cause a problem with getting everything to stick down. And your finished project won't be as nice if you've got little pieces of splinters poking out everywhere. It's harder to work with and you hurt your little fingers. Then you can't craft. Nobody wants that. We wanna keep you busy crafting. Okay, so for this one, I am going to use a glue stick. Just to show you, if you don't have Mod Podge or school glue or some type of a liquid glue, you can use a glue stick for this type of thing. Now, I fussy cut this napkin. I mean, I left some white spots and I am totally okay with that. But off camera, I got, I got in there. Try to remove as much white as possible, but I'm not gonna sweat the other pieces of white that are still there, not a big deal. Okay, so I'm just pressing this down. Again, try to make sure that you lay it in the right position first because when you try to pick it up, it might tear on you and you don't want that. Rather than cutting off my sides here, I'm just gonna go press them down. I'm gonna press them down into that little dip and I like the way it looks. I'm okay with that hanging over, not a problem. I'm gonna go around it with my glue stick and press it right down. It kind of makes it look a little more like it's hand painted, maybe. You just want to be careful. Use a very gentle, light touch, little feathery strokes to make everything stick down. This is so thin, and you do not want to tear it. If you do, no big deal. You have a whole pack of napkins, but, you know, save yourself some time and, and be gentle and careful the first time. Now, you can just take the glue stick, put it on your finger, go around all your edges so that this will not peel up. And this is almost like sealing it in because we have a layer on the bottom and we have a layer on the top. Okay, so this needs time to dry. But it looks pretty, right? Once it's dry, we're going to make a final decision about which one of these we want to use. Came in a pack of six and I've used the other ones on other projects. So four projects I've already used. And now we have two more. And I think I'm gonna go with blessed because I do feel blessed. I'm blessed to have you here. I'm blessed to have all my subscribers and viewers watching and leaving such kind comments. I'm blessed for the coffee that I get from you guys. I'm just blessed in general. My whole life I'm just blessed. We need to remind ourselves sometimes. It's so easy to look at the negative things in our life. It's so easy to dwell on it, but we need to reflect on everything that we've prayed for and we've been given. Okay, so we need to stand for this. And I'm gonna use one of these that I got at the thrift store. I think that brand comes from either Michaels or Hobby Lobby, not sure. But it makes a really good base to hold up a sign. So I'm gonna coat it down with some glue. That's some hot glue. Place this down on here. Make sure I got it in the right position in the back. Up as high or as low as you want it. Press it down, hold it until it dries, and you can see it stands up nicely. Very balanced, it doesn't tip or totter one bit. Now we're gonna take this little stained wording with some hot glue and place it down. So I switched directions on this. I was just gonna do a little sign here but then I decided to do a little something extra. I should have gone ahead and painted the base of the stand that it's on before I glued it down. But now I'm just gonna go ahead and do it now and it's not a big deal because it's a 
paint marker and this is so simple to do. It helps if you're doing a project that actually is wood and you want it to continue to look like wood if you kind of go with what you would think the grain would be. So if you're going side to side, do the entire thing side to side. If you're going up and down, do the entire thing up, up and down. Did you see that? 30,000 subscribers, guys. Is that not wonderful? Yes, it is. I love y'all so much. You're making this channel grow and it's so important to me. It means so much to me. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. I'm glad that you're inspired by my videos and I'm glad that you come back and see me every video. Okay, now the base is stained. The same color as the, woods, the little wood wording. Now I'm going to put a simple bow right on the top of it. And just trying to decide, do I want it on the side, do I want it on the center? Well, I decided on the center and then when I did that, guess what else I decided to add? Yeah, you'll see in just a minute. You can decide. At any point when I'm doing these crafts, you can stop. If you like the sign like it is right now, you can stop where you're at. If you want to add a little something extra, add a bow. If you want to add a something even extra to that, add some greenery. Add some flowers. In just a minute, you'll see what I decided to do. I think you'll like it if you're a fan of all things rustic. Okay, so I'm just pulling that bow a little bit, pulling the tails, pulling the little ears up, trimming off my jute. Always put more than one knot so it will stay for you. So this is going to go in the top center. It's going to go on the lip there, right in between the where it appears there would be like a step down. I'm going to put it right in the top there. And you're going to need to hold that for a minute so that it doesn't slide or move on you. And I'm just holding it while I keep playing with the bow. And it looks good. Protect your fingers because I did get in the glue there but it wasn't too hot so I'm okay. Still got my fingerprints. And I'm just trimming up to make sure that my bow has the same dimensions on each side. And you can stop here if you would like super cute just the way it is or yep I decided to make a little pumpkin out of it I'm gonna take this little stem here this is just a piece out of the little bag you can get at Dollar Tree and I'm just gonna put it right on top give it a minute holding it in place so that it will dry oh my goodness is that not the cutest little end touch if you like it let me know okay now I'm gonna take another pack that's got a bigger picture on it and these are the bigger napkins so these are probably what you would maybe dinner napkins maybe they're luncheon and dinner napkins I don't know but they're two different sizes there's rectangles and squares these are the squares you let me know now I'm just taking this apart because I can use the other section for something else I'm gonna open it up cut it and then I'm gonna take my layers apart it's easier to cut if you leave both of your layers on there um, until you're finished cut and then you can peel them apart Again with the fussy cut. I sure did. Now this is a Dollar Tree frame. It had something else in there, but I've already used it for another project. I'm going to use it again. It already, I had already put, in the, put the yellow and white checked paper in there for, I think it was a summer project. But it looks really good, I think, with this watercolor. So I'm going to take my glue stick and put it all over that paper. It doesn't matter if it gets on the paper in an area that you're not putting your pumpkin. It doesn't matter. It's not going to show. It will dry sheer and you'll never even know. I'm going to try to center this. By the way, if you get, if you're doing this and you don't want to cut around all those little extra leaves and stuff like on the bottom near that sunflower, just cut that stuff off. Nobody's ever going to know. And I really think when you do these projects and you put them out and you share them, nobody is ever going to know this came from a napkin, except maybe from a fellow YouTuber or a crafter. Nobody would even know. It's such a high-end look. I love how you can see the plaid right through the pumpkin that I put on top. I love that. 
I'm just going over my edges and very gently over the top with my glue stick. So I've shown you a couple of different techniques of how to use the glue stick when putting these down. You just be very careful, that's the important thing. I've gotten kind of used to it. Okay, so while that's drying, we're gonna work a little bit on the frame. You can use ribbons, you can use jute, anything that color coordinates to go on the top of here. Or you can leave it alone and not add anything to the top. I'm just going to take my jute. I'm gonna take three pieces of it. This is about maybe seven or eight inches long. I didn't measure it, but just to give you an idea. And we're just gonna put a simple bow here. All of this just overlap together. And I'm just making a little shoelace bow. Carefully tucking all those loops on the inside. And then you're just gonna gently pull back and forth, spread the loops apart work on the knot section so that it stays tight there for you and then trim off your tails at whatever length that you like and i think that will be precious right there and i, I do realize that bows are not for everyone and that's fine but i think fall is a comfy cozy time of year and any little extra texture that you can add just really makes a piece pop and it makes it you know, makes it your own. Gives it a little extra something for your, for your eye to find interest in. So there it is without it. And then this is what it will look like with it. And I've taken a little sunflower that just came off of a sunflower garland that I had from the thrift store. And we're gonna add that too. I'm gonna add the bow and then I cut the little stem part off the back so that the sunflower will lay flat. Otherwise it'll be at a weird angle and I don't want that. and just press it down right in the center. And that is that. What do you think? Cute, huh? So, here are all of these projects added into the rest of my project so you can see how everything coordinates. I'll be linking the playlist for all my fall videos so that you can see all the projects in the background that you didn't see in today's video and they fit in nicely and they are so cute. I'm so happy with all of these. I do have some that are not shown here, but they will be in that playlist, so no worries, you can find them. Look at that, so cute. What an interesting thing to be able to use something totally not intended for crafting you know, a napkin, it's totally intended for a different purpose, but we've taken it and we've used it for something that is just beautiful. Best napkins I've ever seen at Dollar Tree, by far. Probably the prettiest napkins I've ever seen. Thank you so much for watching. If you're new here, I'd love for you to subscribe. Thanks to all of my people who've been here from the get-go and have joined us recently. Thanks for stopping by, and I'll see you again soon. Bye. Today we're making beautiful fall craft using Dollar Tree rub-on stickers. Keep watching. I'm Brandy, and this is Making It My Own. We're going to start off with one of these little banks from the Dollar Tree. One of these little pumpkin containers. And a little metal sign here. Plus, I'm going to be using a pumpkin that came from Dollar Tree last year that I've already DIY'd. Okay, so here are our transfer stickers. I found four. I was so excited. I hope you can find them. We're going to start off with a little bank. It's got gold glitter on the outside. I'm going to open it, peel out that paper, it comes off really easy, and then take some fingernail polish remover and take the writing right off of it. Really got to get a, a good amount on that tissue to get it to come off. You can use a knife and scrape it off if you would rather. Now you just take any type of scrapbook paper that you have. I happen to have some of these little pads that originally came from Target. And I'm going to tear off just a white piece that is embossed with stripes. In order to get the right size, I'm going to flip the backing down onto the top of it. 
and just trace it with my pencil and cut it out. It doesn't have to be perfect because when you put the back on, you'll have nice crisp edges. I'm gonna use my glue stick. I ran out of the purple school glue sticks. Gotta get some more while they're still on sale. And then go over that, flip my paper over. I'm just choosing which side I wanna use and then pressing it down. I'm using a wallpaper tool to just flatten it out a little. I don't wanna press too hard because I don't wanna press the um, dimension out. Now I've chosen to use this grateful, thankful, and blessed decal for this one. I'm just kind of eyeballing it. I know I use that word a lot. I'm just kind of getting an idea of what the center would be. Now you gotta hold it still so that it doesn't slide around and start pressing it down. Now, I wanna let you know that it took a lot of elbow grease to get this one on this embossed paper. I edited a lot of that out, but I finally ended up having better luck using the back of my little spatula over there, pressing it down. Take your time when you do it. Okay, so now I'm gonna, see there? Giving it a little check and it looks good. I'm gonna take some of this pumpkin scented pine cones. They smell delicious. Not like cinnamon, but more like a fall scented candle. I'm gonna open this little bag. This did come from the Dollar Tree. And I've decided I wanna make this like a shaker. So I'm gonna take my little pieces out. There's tiny pine cones and little pieces that look like pumpkins in there. And I'm just gonna put those around in the bottom. I'm not just emptying the bag because I don't want all those little pine seeds to go flying all over the place. They get static electricity and they make a mess in there. So you see one of those little seeds fell out. I don't want a bunch of that. I want it to look nice, neat, and high end. So I'm placing those around in there. Yep, they fit. I even have a couple of extra pieces for another project. I'm gonna put my back on. Just press it down. See, no need for a perfect cut there. And this is what it looks like so far. I did put the little slot for, our, for where you put the money in. I put that on the bottom. Now we're going to use the same tag that came from that little bag. We're just going to cut that little orange strip off and recycle it. And it's going to cover up the hole in the bottom. Use a little hot glue and just put that right down. Now you don't have to worry about it looking unfinished. If anybody lifts it up and wants to shake it, there you go. I'm going to do a little more to this project, but I'm liking it so far. What do you think? Okay. So here is some little lace ribbon that came from Dollar Tree. I tried a couple of different bows for this, but finally decided on this one. You're just going to measure about three inches down, two and a half maybe, and flip it over on itself that, so that when you finish your loops, you have two loops on each side. So two here and two here. You'll need to tie it or use some type of wire or it's so tiny I wouldn't suggest a zip tie. I wouldn't waste it on that. Or you can use scraps of jute. That's what I do. I save all my little hangers off of previous projects and I put them in a jar and then when I need them I just pull them out. Plus I have a spool, a big spool of jute that I use in my projects. So now I'm just cutting this off. This is going to be the bow and then we'll add a separate tail to it. I'm just kind of twisting it around there to make sure that everything is where I need it to be. And then you're just going to take another, I think this is about eight inches approximately, and we're gonna make a tail with that. Just gonna add some hot glue. I trimmed off the extra jute. I'm gonna make it sort of like a V there. And then glue it down. Protect your fingers. I didn't do it right then. I was in a rush, but protect your fingers. They are precious. Okay, so now I'm just cutting off that little piece that was left on the inside. Use whatever type of bow that you like, but I thought this was cute for this project. This is like a rustic glam kind of project. What do you think? It's got the little lace, so it's, and it's got the glitter, and it's gold, so it's kind of glamorous, but it's very rustic with the pieces that we put on the inside. So trim your edges. You can dovetail, do whatever you want. I find with these thin ribbons, it's easier for me to just cut them at a slant. And they still look finished and nice, I think. 
I don't want these tails to be flopping around, so I am just going to glue them down on the edge of the frame, just like this. And this is almost done. I'm gonna take one more of those little mini pine cones, put it right in the middle of my boat. You can put it to the side, you can use a leaf, you could put one of your little pumpkins there if you wanted to, whatever you choose. Hindsight, I should have picked up some more bags of that. It's really nice to work with. Glues down nicely and it's the pine cones are in great condition. They're not shredded at all. Okay, so this is how it looks when it is complete. Isn't that cute? And it all settles back down in the bottom and it smells amazing. Okay, so the next project, we're gonna use this little container. I don't know what this is actually. It's too small to be a napkin holder, but you'll see how I use it. I've got an idea for it. So I'm gonna lay it down on a piece of paper, trace it out, and I've just chosen some yellow plaid or yellow checked. It's kind of at an angle though. But it's really pretty. It came out of another one of those little packs that I've had for a couple of years. Um, originally from Target. You should know if I say I got something from Target, then it came from Dirt Cheap because that their overstock goes there and I buy it when it's very, very cheap. Righty, so if I can keep it in my hand, we're gonna use some glue again. Really simple, this just dries and is less messy um, in my experience than Mod Podge. I do like Mod Podge on other projects though, but just for this and for time's sake, we're gonna use a little glue. Okay, so I'm just using that tool again and I'm just going to press it down, make sure there's no bubbles and we wanna have a nice, smooth, finished look. Like maybe it came from the manufacturer this way. I always strive for a high-end look. Okay, so I'm gonna take my little foam sanding block, also from Dollar Tree, and just go around my edges to make sure that I have a nice, clean edge and it's gonna shear off all the little extras. Now to choose which sticker I want to use for this. I think we'll use this one. Pumpkin spice and everything nice. So cute. I'm going to trim it off so that I can even it up and get it flush where I want it on the bottom. And that looks good. Now without moving your hand, you got to hold it down. You want to just kind of burnish this down. You really want to work on it. And again, I grab this tool knowing that I wouldn't have good results. So I do end up going to my spatula, really putting some elbow grease in it. And then you want to do this very slowly. Peel it up very slowly so you don't pull anything off and make a mess. And this is what it looks like so far. I am loving these transfers. They are amazing. So of course, I want my little gingham ribbon to be on this pumpkin. I'm mixing my patterns, y'all. Mixing my patterns. I don't mind it with this though, because one is so small and the other's larger. It doesn't bother me at all. I have an aunt who used to say that things would make her dizzy if they were too busy. So hopefully this doesn't bother you. If it does, just use a solid color ribbon. This is just mine, you make yours your own. That's what it's all about. Okay, so I'm just gonna glue that right on the stem on the top. Isn't she cute? All right, now I've decided that since the little bottom hasn't been painted or finished here, I'm gonna finish it with some ribbon. Some other suggestions, you could use the furniture repair markers, you could use a little bit of paint, you can use a permanent marker to go around your edges if you would like to finish it off but I think this ribbon looks really cute. What do you think? How would you have done this? And the great thing about this particular project is that we're gonna give it two sides. So instead of the four projects in this video, there's actually gonna be five. So you get an extra. We're gonna have a bonus. Okay, continuing all the way around. So we get back to our original spot and then I'm just going to trim that off neatly and there we go. And I think that that is really going to be nice. Now I really love this print when I was looking through here. I think I'm going to try this on the back. So here we go again, same process. We're going to trace it out, we're going to cut it out, 
take our glue stick, put it all over here. Don't worry about those little cutouts. You are not going to even know they were there. Take that pumpkin, place it down, rub it on there, then you're going to sand it down. Same, same thing. This is such a quick project. I'm going to take some of this Dollar Tree ribbon and I'm going to make another bow exactly the same as the other bow. But this one I'm going to place a little bit lower down on the pumpkin instead of putting it up there high on the stem. It's going to be kind of under the stem. Y'all should know this bow by now. Little bunny ear bow. Simple little shoelace or bunny ear bow. Very easy. And it's great for these projects, especially if you like rustic and farmhouse. Simple projects, you know, simple looks. See, this one's going to be a little bit under. So rather than a hair bow, it's a bow tie. How about that? Okay, now... If you want to add a little something extra, you can choose some um, seed pods, you can choose some leaves, you can choose some pretty flowers. I'm just showing you how you could do it. This is how I'm going to leave mine, just like this. No extras. I think it looks good just like this. And this is how I'm going to use it. These are my craft supplies. I'm going to put them on my crafting table and just add a couple of tools that I use regularly. Look at that. Isn't that cute? You can make this as a gift for someone too. Give a fellow crafter a gift and put them some tools in one of these. I think they would love it. Follow me on my social media, Pinterest, Facebook, and Instagram. Glad to see you there. Okay, so here we go with the next one. This is a little metal house from Dollar Tree. And we're gonna fix her up. I'm just using my pumpkin for the last project. I'm putting it under there just to support it while I am working on it. It's a very highly reflective service. So I want to be sure I can see what I'm doing. My camera lights will give a glare as you can see there to the right. And my eyes aren't as good as they used to be. So I've chosen this Hello Autumn to go on my house, trimmed it down, I'm gonna pull the backing off, place it down carefully where I want it to be, and then hold it down. And then this time I'm using a different tool. This is a little wooden tool. I do not know what this is. If you do, let me know. I got it at Goodwill. I thought it was cute and I thought it could be used for this exact thing. So after it is put down, you can just peel this up. And I will tell you that using it on the metal seemed to work better for me than any other way. It worked quicker. It stuck down better, in other words. So here are some options for you. You could trim it out with a little bit of ribbon on the bottom, on the top, if you would like. You can use some of these pumpkins, just, you know, cut them in half, stick them on there. You could use some pine cones, but I'm gonna put a little wreath on there and I'm gonna make my own wreath with some of this rope. So I'm gonna fold it over. I know how, uh, how big I want it to be because I measured on the top, kind of looked at it. I'm gonna squeeze it together. I'm gonna hold it there for a minute now. I edited that part out so you wouldn't be bored. Then I'm going to use my cutters and just cut off the excess at a slant. So when I add some hot glue, I can roll it down on itself to make a nice circle. So I'm just adding that to the little ends before they fray. Using my finger protectors. These came with my Monvict glue, glue gun. Okay, so there you go. And then I'm going to find its placement on the top. And I think I want to add a little ribbon and a flower to this. Same bow, y'all. Same process. I hope I'm not boring y'all with this. But it's the same process. I wanted these videos, this particular video and these projects, to be on the simple side. And y'all, these would be great on a tiered tray. If you have ones that have a lot of space between the layers, I think these would be so precious. Even on a coffee, coffee bar or something like that because they're small. You know, they would look great in a china cabinet, layer it up with some dishes underneath, some white dishes, It'd be so pretty. How would you use these smaller projects? Where would you put them in your decor? Okay, gonna use a little hot glue so that I can put it down on my little house. And remember, metal gets very hot with hot glue, so just be careful. 
All right, and I'm going to add my little bow to the top. Now I can put the flower down, and I think I'm going to put it in the middle. Yep, she's right there in the middle. So there you go. That one is complete. Next project, I'm just getting another piece of paper to go with my happy fall, y'all. And I think I like this one. I'm going to trace it. You can see I had already done a project on that pumpkin before. And I'm recycling it. I'm going to cut this one out. Same thing. Once I get the right size, I'm going to glue it down. Same thing. Hey, if y'all want to show me some love, you can buy me a coffee. See the description box below for the link. Thank you. Okay, y'all. So we're pressing it down and we're going to take our sounding block and we're going to sand away all those little edges. This is going to make it nice and crisp. I had already painted my edges, so you can go ahead and do yours if you would like. Now for placement, I think I'm going to slide it down like this so it's in the part of the pattern that is not quite so busy. It will stand out just a little bit more. So right here will work. Okay, now I'm holding it down again. Always keep one hand on there. And then I'm just rubbing this on really firmly. And there you go. This is how this one is going to look. I'm going to take some of this wire jute and we're going to make a little tendril for the top, a little curly, pumpkin curly. This is one I had in the past and I'm going to use it again on here. I've done these in other videos um, so you can see how that you do those. A little hot glue around the stem, which by the way I did sand also. It was brown and I sanded it to make it look a little more rustic. Then I'm going to press that down in there and just kind of work with that tendril a little bit, a little vine. And I'm going to use one of these leaves that came from the thrift store, put it right on top. I think that color, that wine color looks great with that. What do you think? That is so simple. So I just wanted to show you I did complete that project, painted the back. All right, so here are all of our goodies. This is our Hello Autumn House with the little wreath. Here's our last project, the Happy Fall, y'all. Here's our Shaker Box, Grateful, Thankful, and Blessed. Pumpkin Spice and Everything Nice, Reversible Tool Caddy, if you will. And if you're enjoying my projects and videos, give me a big thumbs up. I surely do appreciate it. I've got here some projects that I've done in other videos and I'm going to leave you a link in the description box where you can find those videos in my fall playlist for 2021. Thank you so much for watching. Welcome to all my new subscribers. I'm so happy to have you here. I hope you're finding things making you happy and bringing you some joy. Here is the second look. I'm so glad to see you. Thanks for stopping by, and I'll see you again soon. Bye. Today I have some farmhouse rustic decor DIYs. Keep watching. I'm Brandy, and this is Making It My Own. We're going to start off with some of these little metal caps that came from the Crafter Square at the Dollar Tree. Hopefully you can find these. I think they've pretty much been everywhere. And I'm going to use some pedestals that I already had that were thrifted. So one of them is a spool from something that came from Target originally. I think it was like a string that had clips on it. And then the other one is just like a little threshold, something like that, cupcake stand. We're going to use some of my antiquing wax, of course. And I've got some wipes here, any type of wipe you want. And I'm going to use these gorgeous little pumpkin glass containers. I'm going to use this just to make a circle and I have a battery operated candle. This was thrifted. It's skinnier than the ones at Dollar Tree though. I have some Harvest DIY words. I was very happy to find these. They have a good variety in that little pack. And then this came from Dollar Tree guys. This gorgeous, that reminds me of the great pumpkin, Charlie Brown. Y'all remember that? Okay, I'm going to start by adding some of that antiquing wax onto my 
wipe here. We're not going to do the top. This is going to be our top. We're going to leave that alone, but everything else is going to get a good wipe down with that wax. So I'm just protecting my table with a little scrap of cardboard paper. Going to go all the way around the bottom and around the edges. I love the beautiful color this gives. If you don't use a, a like a wet wipe and you use a brush, it's going to be a much darker, almost opaque finish. You really won't be able to see any wood grain through it. And I like the wood grain, so the moisture from the wipe gives just enough, you know, it, it's just enough to kind of water down or weaken that stain so you can see the beautiful wood grain. Okay, so I've even done the underside of the top, but I'm not going to do the top because it is a wax and I don't want it to interfere with the glue. Okay, now we're going to start by, of course, on these tags, you got to take your little hanging signs or hanging price tags off or whatever they're called. And then I'm just going to look here. I'm showing you everything that comes in this pack. Each one of these little words or phrases. I'm just trying to get an idea of which one I want to use. Because we're going to make a little hanging sign. A lot of variety in this pack. I mean, look at all that that comes in one. That is wonderful. You can do so many things with those words, too. You can paint them. You can stain them. Um, you could probably decoupage them if you're really good with a pair of fussy scissors. Okay, I don't want to confuse you with this. Just follow me here. This is about five and a half inches across, right? But it has a ruffled edge, so it's going to be hard to trace. So this one has a nice smooth edge. It is smaller, though, by half an inch. You can see. And that's just a thrifted bucket, but you can use whatever you have. If you got a dinner plate or a saucer or something you want, not a dinner plate, but like a saucer or something, you could use that. So what I'm doing is just cutting around, kind of giving myself about a quarter inch all the way around. This is probably not going to make sense until we go further along, but then I think it's going to click with you. So just keep going around there, trimmy, trim, trim. It doesn't have to be perfectly neat. Just make sure that you have enough room on the sides there. Because I want this piece of fabric to be dimensional on my tag, then we're going to have to give it some type of a little lift or another layer. So I'm using this foam board that was thrifted, but you can definitely get a big sheet of foam board at Dollar Tree. They have black and white at my store, so you can use either one. It really won't matter. And then I'm using my craft knife, also from Dollar Tree. They come in a three pack. So you just keep going around there and keep your hands out of the way. You do not want to lose a finger. It's very sharp. So I'm trying to watch where I position my hands as I'm cutting. And it's not perfect and I don't mind that. That's okay. It's supposed to be crafted. It's supposed to be handcrafted even when you make little mistakes. I'm going to use some of my glue stick. Use any brand that you like. I've had success with every one I've tried. I've never had a glue stick to fail on me. Just go around your edges. Make sure you get it all the way to the edges and all the way down. Nice smooth coverage. You can get the purple ones, which is what I prefer, but I'm out right now. And those will show you exactly where you've laid it down, which is perfect. Okay, so do you see why we wanted to leave a little extra around where that foam board was trimmed it's because we want to make a nice smooth edge by tucking it and gluing it so i'm putting on my finger protectives that happen finger protectives oh my goodness finger protectors yes there's the word that came with my new glue gun that i've tried and you're going to just put that around that foam edge i'm using the cool temperature instead of hot because you know styrofoam or or foam with the hot hot glue is kind of a disaster waiting to happen. So I'm using the cool temperature setting on this and I'm just going to go around and press it down. If you want to show me some love, you can buy me a coffee. Look at the link in the description box. Thank you. Continue going around your edge just like this, a little bead of glue and just rubbing it downward to try to make it straight. And the little groupies on these finger protectors are perfect. Okay, so there we go on that. 
And you really wouldn't have to go and trim all this up if you didn't want to, but I'm kind of weird about this kind of stuff, so I'm just going to go around and cut my excess off. And also, when doing this, it shows you if there's any areas that need to be, you know, you need to pay a little more attention to, maybe add a little more glue to. So I'm just going to go around there and trim that all up. There we go. So this is going to be our next layer on top of our little bottle cap metal sign. Also, if it was turned upside down, it would look like a tart pan, wouldn't it? There's you some ideas. Okay. Hot glue. All over that. By the way, I used my cool glue and I used it on this metal and it has not popped off yet. And that was a week ago. I'm a little behind. I wanted to make sure that I was lining the print up with my hanger so that it won't hang crooked. And I'm going to choose the welcome fall sign because I'm ready. Today's September the 1st, the day that I'm recording this voiceover, and I am so ready. I'm going to do the same thing as we did before. I'm going to add a little bit of that on there onto that wipe and squish it around in there good and then start laying it down all over my little wooden welcome fall wording. Just kind of pressing it down, rubbing it. Perfect. You don't want to use tissue or cotton balls because it's going to shred everywhere, but the wipes work great. Okay, so here's the top unfinished, and we're going to set this right on top. This is going to give us a little riser. You can fill in these holes with like a little piece of um, aluminum foil if you want to, but the way I cover it, we're not going to have to do that. All right, to hold this down so that nothing I put on there, if it's breakable, will fall off, I'm going to use a little Gorilla Glue and hot glue. The hot glue is going to give us a quick quick fix until the Gorilla Glue has time to sit up. So now I'm going to add the hot glue. You want to put that on second because it uh, dries faster than the Gorilla Glue. So you don't want your hot glue to dry before you get your top on there. Now to try to make it in the center, I'm standing up and looking down over my project. That's why you see this angle. I'm looking down through my viewfinder on my camera. Then I'm gonna use my little electrical insulator on top to, to weigh it down. Okay. Back on the little bottle cap while that's drying. And I'm going to add my little hello, welcome fall, excuse me, welcome fall. It's crooked right now, but you can see I do move it. I will fix it. Scoot it, there we go. Hey, I want to give you some options for this. If you would like to add embellishments, you can take a little metal leaf, like the ones that come on some of the pumpkins and some of the signs from Dollar Tree. You can take a little hop and some leaves or any type of seeded stems to embellish it if you would like. But I like mine plain just like this. You could also add a bow if that's something that you want to do. I'm kind of digging it just like this. Be sure you follow me on my social media. I'm on Pinterest, Facebook, and Instagram. All right, look at this riser. She is complete, with an exception of her embellishments. So now I'm gonna take some of this ribbon. This was thrifted. This actually may have been a piece of, this I think came from my neighbor. She went through her craft supplies uh, over the summer sometime, I think, and she gave me like two boxes of ribbon and all kinds of good stuff. So thank you, Angie, if you are listening. You can see that I'm using it. Protect your fingers and then I'm going to put a dot, little dot of glue in each one of those ridges right in the bottom of each one. Dot, dot, dot. And then I'm going to take my finger and press it, try to center it, and press it down into the glue dots. You're going to want to work fairly quickly with this because hot glue on metal dries very quickly. So you got you to gotta keep moving. Now, in order to not bore you to death, I have sped mine up. I really don't move that fast. But this is what you do. You want to try to keep it in the center of each one of those ridges and go all the way around. I hope that all of my viewers and subscribers who have been in the path of Ida are good. I hope that you are all safe. I know we had company from Louisiana that fled and came to Southern Alabama to stay with us and we were so happy to have them. I think the kids just thought it was like camp. 
they just loved it. They loved seeing their cousins and, you know, we thought we were safe. We thought we were in the clear and I'll be darned if a tornado did not come and hit our property and we had a huge mess. So I'm behind a little bit. I appreciate your understanding, your patience and your support as we work through getting the cleanup and everything done. And, um, yeah, so there's that. Y'all are in my prayers. There is our little riser, and I want to add a little bow to it. So I'm just going to do this simple bow. You've seen me do about a thousand times. Like a little shoelace bow. You're going to grab your ribbon, make two little ears, twist them around one another, and then tighten it a little at a time so that you get your little ears the right size. Excuse me for being out of the camera there. And then trim your tails up the way you want the tails to look. You don't have to put anything on yours. I think it finishes up the uh, the tray nicely. I think it's a cute little rustic and almost cottagey feel because of the bow and the little you know added ribbon. It gives it a little more femininity, and I like that. I love the color of this ribbon. It's like a tan, kind of a very muted or I don't know, like very muted gold or tan color. If you like this, please give me a thumbs up. I may be struggling a little bit through this video, but hey, I'm here. I'm here and I'm doing it. I don't want to be out of the picture for too long. I know you, we need a constant flow of inspiration and, and hope right now, so I hope I can bring you some joy. Now, I, I have had these little candle holders since last year and really didn't know what to do with them. Um, I had lots of ideas, but I couldn't settle on anything. So I got an idea that I think will be, will be a cute idea. I am wrapping the same ribbon that we used on our little riser around the top of this. I wanted to try it out first and see what it was going to look like. If you've got a wider ribbon, maybe an inch and a quarter or an inch, whatever the depth of that top of that jar is, then you could always use that if you wanted to do that. But I didn't have anything in the color that matched what I had on my little riser that I made. So I'm just going to use this and just wrap it around and around and around until I get to that top. Same thing is gonna go here is with the metal. When you're using glass and hot glue, you gotta work quickly. If you don't wanna use hot glue, you could always use Gorilla Glue for this. You know, the difference is it's gonna take longer for your project to set up, which will give you kind of um, a little bit of time where you have to wait. And with hot glue, especially for purposes of doing videos for you guys, it gets the project done quicker so that you can see how, you know, to get it made on your own. I hope that made sense. It did in my head, but I don't know. Once it got to my mouth, I don't know if that made sense. But yeah, you know what I mean. You get what I'm saying. So then you want to just trim off when you get all the way up to the top. I try to do mine at a slant so it won't fray and it just gives it a nicer, more finished look, I think. And I am liking the way that looks. I have done this before and I'm going to do this again to help keep my rounded items from rolling while I'm crafting with them. I'm just going to secure them down by sitting them on the silicone tips of those clamps and then I've just put my, my um, what I use as a paperweight <laughs> up top to hold that little pumpkin still while I'm working on it. And of course I moved it and made a mess. I'm going to make a little swag to go on the top, if you want to call it a swag. I'm going to, I've just chosen these pieces off of a random pick that I thrifted and I cut it down. It was actually, I think there's like probably seven leaves on the little branches and I just cut it off because it makes more sense to scale on the small item to have a smaller, um, smaller area to work with, you know. It just needs to be more in proportion, I guess is what I'm trying to say. I'm taking some floral wire. I've added a little bits of, it looks like a seeded grass or something there. Little seed pods. I've wrapped them together and I'm gonna place them right there. Now the advantage of the ribbon being there is that this little greenery is gonna stick nicely right on there. I wanna do it on top of where I already had my ribbon finished, you know, where it ended so that I don't have any rough edges poking out. I always try to have my finished items looking high-end. Handcrafted is great and everything, 
that's fine, totally fine, especially for like a rustic farmhouse, that type of a, a feel. But I really want it to look neat because if I've got to look at it and I've got a bunch of bad ends hanging out everywhere, it, it'll drive me nuts. That's just my personality, but you would do whatever works for you. I've just taken more little bits of um, things that I had left over and just added that around there. It, I think the colors are complimentary. They look great with with what I already had going on there. And you'll see um, something I've noticed with my with glue, hot glue in particular, is that when you use a cool temperature, you get a lot more of those little webs. No big deal. Just pull them off. That's what I do. And I have been told by some of my wonderful viewers and subscribers that if you use a blow dryer or a little heat gun, it will take those little webs right off for you. I don't have either one of those things right now, so like I've said before, we're going to fake it till we make it. I'll just pull it off and make it look like I spent that extra time. I appreciate all of y'all so much being here. My channel is growing. I get so many nice compliments. You know, it seems like our community is just made of the nicest, most supportive, understanding people. You don't get trolls on here. You don't get people who are negative and ugly. I mean, it's a crafting channel. We all do our own thing. We craft it to our liking, right? That's me playing with the webs. So I appreciate y'all, and I wanted to take the opportunity to tell you that. Again, I really, it, it matters. This is our channel, right? We do this together. Okay, so that's how it's going to look when we put it up, but I will show you our finished look. And these are our three items that we did. I love my super adorable backdrop that I have going here now. I've changed around my crafting space, and I'm really loving it. Really love it. I'm going to show it to y'all in the live video that we do, hopefully. That'll be coming soon. Okay, so here we go. Nice, nice. Here's the bottle cap sign just hanging there. Whoops. That should have been edited out. Sorry about that. And then there's the little candle jar, little pumpkin candle jar. And here is the little riser. Now keep in mind, you do not want to use a real candle. That's dangerous. See what you can find that is a faux candle. Thank you so much for watching. I appreciate you stopping by and I'll see you again soon. Bye. Today, I have more Dollar Tree cuteness. Keep watching. I'm Brandy, and this is Making It My Own. All right, number one is a fall topiary. We're going to have some greenery here. These are thrifted pieces of greenery. I have a thrifted little mini wreath down there. These are some greenery pieces that are on a garland really really pretty I'm gonna pick off the cream color and you'll see below I have three of those crackled glass or ceramic pumpkins from the Dollar Tree I'm gonna start by figuring out my setup now I know I'm gonna need some foam and in order to hold that in I'm gonna cut a piece of scrap paper make a little circle there for the bottom I'm just gonna hot glue it down on this wreath so that we can press our picks into a piece of styrofoam instead of gluing it all together. It makes the items more versatile so you can change things up. Now I'm going to take a scrap of styrofoam. So easy. Take this out of some boxes from something you've gotten in the mail. Then I'm going to add some hot glue. You're going to need Gorilla Glue or some E6000 for this project because it is a shiny glass. Be sure also that you use some alcohol to wipe down all your pumpkins so that that glue gets some good grip. Now you're going to pick whatever type of matching, coordinating, whatever makes your little heart happy greenery. Fall greenery, preferably. And I'm going to mix it up a little bit. So I'm going to use these little pieces, and you can see here I am doing four corners. So I've got kind of a square shape, and then I'm just going to fill in in between. This is very easy. I'm tucking this in between the wreath form and the pumpkin, and it goes right into the styrofoam. If you don't have styrofoam, you could always put your picks right into your wreath. Now I'm going to start adding these little pieces. 
They look, I don't know, like little seed pods maybe. Not really sure what you would call them. And I'm gonna do those in a square as well. I like the look of this. And so far we've got our orange and our cream and we will be bringing in some bluish green when we put the eucalyptus in there. Okay, so far so good. First pumpkin down, first layer down. Now I've decided that I want my orange to go in the middle. So I'm just gonna add a good bit of glue and conveniently enough, there's a hole in the bottom. So you're just gonna go at an angle, slide that straight on there, make sure that it's level and I was standing above it looking down hold it until it is dry and secure. Then we're going to take the last pumpkin, same thing, going to put a good bit of glue on here. We don't want anything to topple over and break. And then put it on a slant there and then put it straight down. You don't want to break anything so just be gentle with this. I was afraid because it has a crackle finish that it may be a little more fragile than your normal ceramic or glass pumpkin. So. Just something to keep in mind, be careful. Okay, so now I've got this beautiful bluish green eucalyptus that I have cut into pieces. And I'm gonna start tucking those in that bottom layer of greenery. And then we'll move up a little bit between the pumpkins in a minute. I'm just kind of looking to see what I like here. I don't have a particular pattern for this, but I do like to try to space them out kind of evenly so that I get a good distribution of all the colors all the way around. So from all angles, so you could actually put this in the center of your table if you wanted to or on your bar because it looks nice in all directions. Just be sure that you rotate your piece and that things are looking like you want it to look. So I'm laying some pieces flat and some at an angle putting some on top and some underneath and some in between. These little picks were also thrifted. I don't know if I mentioned that. So now I'm between the top and the second pumpkin and I am just adding on some little leaves there. I didn't use any of the orange and yellow between these because I have all that color, the cream, in the orange in the top two pumpkins, so I just wanted to add the eucalyptus between these layers. I'm just using a pick to help me press it in between the layers so that I don't put too much stress on it by trying to put my finger in there to hold it still. Okay, now I'm going to add a couple of pieces on the top and a little, little more in between. You can use a dowel rod or a pen or a pencil piece of wire or whatever you have to kind of tuck those things in there and that's what I've done. I want to let them have a little bit of movement so I'm only putting the glue on one end so that the tips of the leaves you know kind of stand out. And this is what we have. Then I'll look at it see if you want to add anything else and at this point you can certainly do that. Give me a thumbs up if you like this one. Project number two is going to be our home swag. Now this is a Dollar Tree sign. They have a variety of gorgeous signs. Pick whichever ones that you want. And then we're gonna have some pieces that go with this that are gonna coordinate with these colors. So that bluish green, aqua turquoise, teal, whatever color you wanna call it, creams, and some orange, white. We're gonna set this off. And of course, you know, I'll have my typical brown burlap in there as well. Now, to kind of give this little sign a glow up, you're going to want to take some dark brown paint or some dark gray, something like that, and go down these lines. As you can see here, where they made this project, you can it kind of looks papery and kind of cheapy because you can see little white flecks. If you go down your centers like this with this, a darker colored paint, it really makes it look higher end. In my opinion, it really makes a difference. And I'll show you when I'm done with this, one side, the difference between the two sides and the look of it. You can already see there on that O what a difference that makes. So we're just rubbing a little bit on. I have a, like a fine tip marker. I'm just gonna put that in there and then rub it back off. 
and every bit of the paint that needs to stay is going to stay right where we put it. So you see the difference here? Look at the difference in the two sides. That makes a big difference. You could also, I guess, use a Sharpie or some type of a marker if you've got something that's narrow and long enough to fit into that crack. Just so easy. And it really does make a big difference in the appearance of this little sign. But you do this or leave it out, whichever way you prefer to do it. And, you know, maybe some of the signs are in better shape than mine was. Okay, feel free to distress your edges if you need to. Now, this is a wreath, a rectangular wreath or swag type form. It's wire and it has little, I guess, tinsel type branches or holders on it. It was $5.99. I got it from the thrift store, so I'm not sure where it originally came from. But you can get yours at any craft store. Or, if you don't want to use this type of form, you can use pipe cleaners and hot glue them right to the back of your sign. Just not even have that big form back there. This is just going to make it a little more sturdy. And since I had it, I wanted to take the opportunity to try it out. Now, I've just flooded over the wire there with some hot glue. And I'm actually using my cold temperature um, glue with this so I don't burn myself. And then I'm going to take some, I think this is 3M tape and put that right over the top. That is really gonna make a good strong hold so that this swag doesn't go anywhere. Nothing's gonna fall apart, hopefully. Ideally, I suppose I should say. And we're gonna do that on every one of those little crossbars there. Be sure to follow me on my social media. I'd love to get to know you better. Okay, so now we're going to start layer on, layering on our prettiness. This is some 24 inch deco mesh. This is one piece that I found at the thrift store. Wasn't really sure what I was going to do with it when I found it, but I was so excited that there's no glitter in it and no metallic in it. I had to have it for something. It turned out perfect for this project. I'm just going to start it off by tucking it in the back and wrapping it around tightly so that it doesn't come apart whenever I am tugging on it to make the little poofs. So now we're going to go down about 12 inches. You can see we're going down 12 inches. Walk in your fingers toward the middle. Let your sides go under. It's going to make a better little poof. And then we're going to go up to the very next little grabbers there. That little section and we're going to press it into the frame and then twist it tightly. Okay, so again, we're going to go down about 12 inches. We're going to walk it toward each other with our ends under, so the poof's in the middle. Just like that. Press it into that section tightly, and then give it a twist. And we're going to continue the same process all the way up. We're going to do the same thing across the top. I'm going to gather it up here. I'm having a little trouble here. I don't know what the problem was. There we go. Grabbing it up, bending it over the top. And then we're going to continue all the way back down the side. Feel free to measure these to get exact measurements if you would like. I didn't need to do it that way. I didn't feel the need. So I just guesstimated. Continue all the way around and look at that. I had just enough to go all the way around. Now I'm just going to pull my little poofs out a little bit. Press the first little top edge underneath if it's coming out. That way my sign is going to be, a, you know, you can really be able to see that sign in the middle. Now this is some five inch burlap. There's no wire or anything in here. I'm just going to use this to go on the outside. I'm going to tuck it under. You can see how I tucked it under that deco mesh. And the same little process, kind of scrunching it up in the middle and then giving it a twist to hold it in place. We're going to do this again. About the same thing. It's going to be about the same measurement, about 12 inches. Go up. It's just going to go like a frame 
on the outside of the deco mesh. So you can see how this is looking. Pushing it together in the middle and then twisting it down. Now, if you don't want to twist it tightly to begin with to make sure that your measurements are about the same, you don't have to twist it in completely tightly and you can certainly untwist it and go back and make adjustments if you need to. Okay, so I'm just gonna go over the top like a little hoodie. You can tell I have kids, right? Yeah. Continuing on around until we're back in our original starting place. You can tuck the edge to the back and cut it off. See there? Okay, so now I've got some thrifted. This is like a linen and glittery orange plus a blue Dollar Tree ribbon. We are going to be cutting these down in 10 inch pieces. And you want to have enough of each ribbon to go in each one of those ties on your swag. So that's what you're gonna see me do here. I'm just gonna start cutting that. And I'm just measuring it against the one before it. Makes it a little easier. Okay, that's me counting to see, to make sure I have enough. Then we're gonna dovetail the ends to make them nice and neat. I hope you guys are doing some of these crafts that I've been showing you. I hope that you have been trying some of these and that you are at least getting some inspiration from all of the things that I have been showing you. Lots more to come, so be on the lookout. Remember, three videos a week unless the internet says absolutely not. Okay, so I'm going to overlap. I'm going to make an X. going to open up one of those ties, whatever you want to call those, going to twist them in tightly in each of those sections. I'm going to use my fingers to curl those out. Now it's an X. Just make your adjustments however you like. The next one we're going to put in the opposite direction. We're still going to keep the green on top, but we're going to cross it over the other direction. I'm going to open that up question myself for a moment and then wrap it down. I'm putting these in definitely tighter because I know this is the last thing I'm going to wrap in here. So I'm going to go ahead and tighten them down as much as they need to be before they are tucked away. Continue on the process, alternating the direction of your X's all the way around. Y'all, it is so hot here in southern Alabama. I am ready, ready, ready for some fall breezes, desperately. It's just humid and ugh. I'll stay in the basement and craft. That's what I'll do until it gets cool outside. How does that sound? Good? Good. Okay, so here we go. We only have two left on the bottom, and you can see I'm kind of fluffing them out as I go along. Place this one down and twist it in tight. That's some good Dollar Tree ribbon right there. It really holds its form. All right, so. I'm concerned about the top of here, so I'm going to cut off that cord that you would usually use as a hanger, and I'm going to cut a 6 inch and a 5 inch piece of this pretty orange and tan ribbon. I am going to dovetail each one of them. One will be longer than the other, and we're going to make a little bow tie bow. We're going to put the longer piece in the back, the shorter on the front. Gonna pinch it together and then 
it's going to be so cute look at that then you're going to just use whatever type of jute you want you can use your original hanger that you just had on top of that sign to tie off your bow I tied a double knot so nothing comes loose trim it up and look how cute that is that is super cute little hot glue and we'll put it in its new home right at the top on the pumpkin stem and this is how it looks not bad not bad at all so now is the time that we tuck back all of those little pieces of greenery or little pieces of the I don't even know what to call those things we're just gonna call them tinsel because that's what it looks like a Christmas tree branch tuck them all to the back once they are hidden we're going to take some of this greenery now get yours from the Dollar Tree if you'd like you can get them anywhere you want this happens to be something that I thrifted so I got it very inexpensive it did come originally from Walmart it's a two dollar clearance item according to the tag that I found on it I'm gonna layer up the pieces of the leaves that I want to use some are going to be single some are going to be doubled and with a little hot glue we're going to tuck them in and around those little ribbon sections if you have some mini pine cones if you have some berries if you have some of those little ball ornaments you could use those you can add anything you like on your sign to make it your own that's what we do here we make it our own right I'll make mine the way I like it and you make yours the way you like it but feel free to make yours like mine if that's what you like so you're gonna have leaves in all of those sections and just kind of look and see what looks good they don't all have to go in the same direction totally up to you I'm gonna take a little bit of floor wire feed it through the deco mesh twist it around and we're gonna have a little make a little hanger for it and there you go if you want to show this channel some love you can buy me a coffee look in the description box for the link okay number three mini floral vase we're gonna use a pick from Dollar Tree we're gonna use a for me it's a thrifted eucalyptus stem but you use what you have a scrap of this ribbon that we just used and this is a thrifted little bottle we're gonna call it a vase I'm gonna take the sea glass paint take it outside give it a good spray down one coat and let it dry and this is our result it's gonna match pretty good with what we already have going on so that these three pieces will coordinate we're gonna wrap this ribbon around the middle just like this little bit of hot glue we'll put this in place and we'll hold it securely on there sometimes it'll slip off of regular glass but I find when you spray paint glass it does give it a little more grip especially if it's not gloss colored and this is not a gloss so now we have our first band in the middle and I'm just gonna take some of this raffia it came in a big bundle that I got at Dollar Tree and I did get it this season so be on the lookout for it I'm going to wrap it wrap it wrap it you see I left one little section out so that we would have an end to tie with now you can just tie a knot or two knots in your raffia just so that it doesn't come loose you could do one knot and a little bit of hot glue if you wanted you could put a little piece of greenery on there just a couple of little ideas for you then kind of squish my little rope or my little raffia up so that it's it looks better and then just layer in your pieces how simple is that that's like the simplest thing ever and look how pretty and it is going to coordinate perfectly with the swag that we already have and our pumpkin topiary all right so displayed here are our three pieces I would love to know what you think about this now I have to say I'm stepping outside of the box here for me I like the traditional colors for fall 
So adding in this aqua, turquoise, teal, blue, whatever you want to call this, is a little different for me. It's a little... I don't really know how I feel about it. I think it looks really good together as a set. I don't know that I would necessarily have a place to display it in my home. So these goodies may go to somebody in my family who would like to have them. Not entirely sure. But I think that they look really good together. I think that the colors are very complimentary. I love how that bluish green looks with the orange. I think it looks really nice together. But I'm a creature of habit. Just a creature of habit. Do you like this? Do you like the color combination? And I would love to know, are you going to try any of these? If so, which one will you be trying and did you find anything inspirational in this video? Because if you did, I would love a thumbs up. I would love to hear in the comments what you think. Thank you so much for stopping by and I'll see you again soon. Bye!